Welcome to a general review of the O2 E700 ventilator. The E700 is a time-cycled, volume-constant, and pressure-controlled ventilator designed for use in both hospital and transport settings. The device is manufactured by O2 Medical Technologies, Inc., and it meets the requirements of FDA, Health Canada, and CE. External Connections On the right side of the ventilator, we have the air exhaust port, the relief flapper, and the battery compartment, which contains the lithium battery. On the left side, we have the DC input connector, air intake filter, sensor connector number one, sensor connector number two, 22 millimeter gas output connector, and gas supply input. Battery. The E700 is designed to run on the internal rechargeable battery pack or by using the AC-DC external power supply. Installing the battery. Ensure that the ventilator is turned off and unplugged from the main electrical supply. Turn the yellow screw knobs on the battery compartment cover counterclockwise to open it. Next, connect the battery leads. Close the battery compartment cover and turn the yellow screen knobs clockwise to lock. Its fully charged battery must always be installed for safety reasons, even when operating from an external power supply, so the continuous ventilation is not interrupted in the absence of external power. Patient Circuit The patient circuit consists of a 22 mm corrugated hose, breathing control hose, two pressure sensor hoses, a one-way intake valve, exhalation port, mushroom valve, and a flow sensor adapter. On the ventilator end, the circuit has three connections, two pressure sensor hose connectors and the 22 mm hose connection, connecting the patient circuit and gas supply. Connect the high pressure oxygen supply hose to the 9 16 inch DISS connections, hand tighten only. Connect the sensor hose with the lure lock to the sensor connector number one and push the other sensor hose onto connector number two. Connect the 22 mm circuit hose to the male 22 mm outlet. Connect the other end of the oxygen supply hose to the regulated gas supply, oxygen cylinder, or wall outlet. Turn on the gas supply slowly and fully. Note: Ensure that the patient's circuit is not attached to the patient when connecting the circuit to the ventilator. A breathing circuit filter may be used if located between the patient connection and the mask or the ET tube. Ventilator controls. To control the ventilator functions, the following key membrane buttons along with the control selection knob are used. On off button. The key turns on the ventilator if pressed for one second and off if depressed for four seconds. Control selection knob. The knob is used to select all ventilator modes and ventilation parameters. Manual key. During the exhalation phase, if the key is pressed, a mandatory breath will be initiated and either the flow rate or set pressure control parameter will be delivered as long as the manual key is pressed or until the set inspiratory time is achieved. After the inspiratory time, if the key is still pressed, the ventilator will switch to the inspiratory hold function in which the ventilator will cut the flow but will keep the exhalation port closed in order to block exhaled gas from venting to ambient, resulting in the maintenance of lung pressure. The maximum inspiratory hold time is six seconds. After that time, the ventilator will switch to exhalation phase by opening the exhaust port to ambient. All modes except CPAP and CPR have the manual function enabled. Brightness key. Pressing this key will change the colors on the screen to achieve a better contrast and brightness. Silence key. Pressing this key will silence the audible alarms for two minutes. It can also be selected when there is no alarm in order to silence potential alarms for two minutes. When selected, the mute button symbol will be shown on the screen. Pause key. Depressing the pause key will stop the ventilations with all buttons remaining active if they were not locked, except manual. The pause symbol will flash on the screen as well as the confirmation symbol in the window, along with the confirmation LED to guide users to activate pause by pressing the control knob. The symbol will flash for 10 seconds and then disappear if confirmation is not selected. 
Once activated, a flashing yellow pause symbol will be displayed on the screen and ventilator will stop ventilation. To resume the ventilation, press the key again and the control knob to confirm. Lock key. By pressing this key, all keys except on, off, silence, brightness, and the control knob will be disabled. A lock symbol will be displayed on the screen. To cancel lock function, press the lock key again. Waveform selection key. Pressing the waveform key toggles between pressure and volume ventilation waveforms on the display. Cancel key. The cancel key allows the operator to return to the previous settings if the last unconfirmed changes in settings are no longer required. LED displays. The power LED flashes yellow intermittently when the ventilator is turned off and the battery supply is charged. When turned on, the LED flashes at a high frequency for one second, then turns to green and holds a steady state. The confirmation LED at the side of the control knob flashes green and is accompanied by a green flashing checkmark symbol on the display screen to advise that confirmation of a setting selection change is required. To confirm the change, depress the rotary control. The ventilator will revert to previous setting if not confirmed within 10 seconds. There are three power LEDs on the left of the key membrane. The top LED indicates that the ventilator is running on internal battery power. The central LED indicates that the ventilator is running on mains power. The bottom LED indicates that the ventilator battery is charging. The illuminated warning alarm triangle gives a visual indication of an alarm status with the cause of the alarm being indicated on the TFT display. This alarm will flash yellow for low-level alarms and red for high-level alarms. Screen Sections and Control The screen is divided in seven sections. Section 1 – Battery Status During Charge and Discharge Section 2 – Live Ventilation Parameters Section 3 – Ventilation Modes Section 4 – Alarms, Warnings Section 5 – Ventilation Waveforms Section 6 – Setup Parameters Section 7 Confirmation Request Patient Effort Invalid or Conflict Setting Turning on the ventilator To turn the device on, press the on-off key for one second. Once the ventilator is turned on, three silhouettes will be displayed to represent infant, child, and adult patient sizes. Rotate the control knob to select the size of patient to be ventilated and press the control knob to confirm. If no selection occurs within 20 seconds, or the control selection knob is not pressed to confirm, the ventilator will automatically start in the child mode. Each size comes with preset parameters to guide the user and eliminates the need for a potentially long setup before starting ventilation. Assist Controlled Ventilation ACV, is the default startup ventilation mode. Ventilation Modes the E700 ventilator is equipped with five ventilation modes to enable the healthcare provider to tailor the ventilation settings to the patient's specific respiratory requirements. ACV, Assist Control Ventilation, SIMV, Synchronized Intermittent Mandatory Ventilation, Bilevel, Biphasic Positive Airway Pressure, CPAP, Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, CPR Mode. Ventilation can be delivered invasively by using an ET tube or non-invasively by using a mask. In all modes, should the patient spontaneously demand more flow than set by the healthcare provider, the patient can inhale the required volume from ambient. Each ventilation mode has a default, which will be initiated on selection of that specific ventilation mode if no changes to the settings are made. Assist Control Ventilation ACV. In this mode, the ventilator can deliver volume ventilation if tidal volume is selected or pressure ventilation if pressure controlled ventilation is selected. During assist control ventilation mode, the ventilator will deliver controlled mandatory ventilation regardless of any patient effort if the trigger is disabled. The default trigger setting for ACV is 3 liters per minute but can be adjusted up to 15 liters per minute. Synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation SIMV. In this mode, the ventilator will deliver volume ventilation at the set tidal volume and rate. The default trigger for this mode is 3 liters per minute, but can be adjusted up to 15 liters per minute. If the trigger condition is met, 
the ventilator will deliver synchronized, volume-controlled, mandatory ventilation. In SIMV mode, the selected breathing rate remains constant and the time of spontaneous breathing window will change if patient triggers the synchronized mandatory breath before the normal start of the next inhalation phase. Pressure Support Ventilation PSV. PSV is a form of assisted ventilation for the patient who is breathing spontaneously but whose respirations are insufficient. This feature is available only on SIMV mode and CPAP mode. The ventilator provides an inspiratory flow based on the patient's inspiratory effort. Ventilator sensitivity to the patient's inspiratory effort is operator adjusted by using the trig. Control and the inspiratory flow rate are tailored to patient's demand by the ventilator. The point at which the ventilator cycles off, stated as a percentage of peak flow, is based on measured airway pressure, the peak inspiratory pressure, and PEEP, which are set by the operator. Biphasic Positive Airway Pressure Bilevel Bilevel mode is similar to SIMV but comes with pressure ventilation. By setting both inhalation pressure and PEEP levels, the ventilator will deliver pressure-controlled mandatory breaths at set rates. The default trigger for spontaneous breathing window is 3 liters per minute but can be adjusted up to 15 liters per minute. In bilevel mode, the selected breathing rate remains constant and the time of spontaneous breathing window will change instead if patient triggered the synchronized mandatory ventilation before the normal start of the inhalation phase. Continuous Positive Airway Pressure CPAP. In CPAP mode, the ventilator will deliver a continuous flow rate to generate positive airway pressure and use the control valve to maintain CPAP levels. There are two breathing modes available for the patient during CPAP. The first mode is with spontaneous breathing when the optional pressure support is zeroed out, displaying a dash. In this option, the ventilator adjusts the amount of flow internally to maintain an average airway pressure close to CPAP setting. The second mode is when the optional pressure support ventilation is set to a desired value. The ventilator will deliver the set PSV pressure starting at triggering point and until the exhalation phase starts. The CPAP mode is equipped with apnea backup. The ventilator switches to assist control ventilation when the ventilator does not trigger patient's spontaneous breathing for a period of time set by the user. CPR mode. The CPR mode consists of timed chest compression audible prompts and visual indications on the screen coupled with automatically delivered breaths for both intubated and mask ventilated patients. The CPR mode for masked ventilated patients is the default setting for this mode, but changes can be made between the two submodes at any time. The CPR mode for masked ventilated patients consists of two phases, chest compression and ventilation. 30 chest compressions over 18 seconds are synchronized with audible prompts and on-screen visual animations, followed by two one-second mandatory breaths within a five-second ventilation phase. The ratio between chest compressions and ventilations is 30 to 2. The CPR mode for intubated patients consists of continuous compressions, indicated by an audible prompt and visual animation at a rate of 100 compressions per minute, plus an automatically delivered breath every six seconds. The default ventilation in CPR mode is flow-controlled ventilation. The default tidal volume is set according to the initial startup patient size selection when switching to CPR mode but could be adjusted to desired values if needed. Optional pressure-controlled ventilation is provided by setting the PCV pressure parameter. If PCV parameter is selected, the flow-controlled ventilation will be disabled. The FiO2 is fixed at 100% oxygen during CPR mode. Note that in PCV, the chest compressions may initiate a breath if the recoil is sufficient to initiate the trigger. Control Adjustment to change the ventilation mode, rotate the control selection knob and move the yellow cursor to Section 3. Press the knob and rotate it to choose the desired mode, then press the knob again. A check mark will show up on Section 7. To confirm and activate the changes, press the knob one more time. If no selection occurs within 10 seconds, or the control selection knob is not pressed to confirm, changes will be cancelled and the previous parameters selected will remain active. To change the ventilator settings in each mode, rotate the control selection knob to the required ventilation parameter in Section 6. 
press the control selection knob and rotate it to choose the desired setting of the parameter, then press the knob again. A check mark will show up on section 7. To confirm and activate the changes, press the knob one more time. If multiple parameters are to be changed, each parameter can be changed before making the final confirmation by pressing the control knob. After use, press and hold the on-off button for 4 seconds. The ventilator will turn off. Turn off gas supply to the ventilator and disconnect the gas supply hose and patient circuit. Unplug the power cable if no charging is required. Disinfect the ventilator housing and supply hose using a damp cloth according to the manual. Replace the patient circuit with a new circuit. Always refer to the product's manual and O2 Medical's website for more information regarding the device.